Hey guys, how's it going? Just come home from work and Dr. Voodoo has been released. So just going to do a quick in-depth look at him and initial impressions um, and then we're going to flick it out to you guys. So here we go. Uh, Dr. Voodoo, six health, both sides, healthy and uh, injured. Medium mover, quick read of the article, didn't say what art, what size he was. So I know they say it on... Uh, the streams, which I don't bother watching. So size two, uh, four threat. So that's a really good stat line for four threat. Two, two, two four for defense. We'll cover that later because of um, he's got some defensive shenanigans available to him. Why don't you just kill the music? It's kind of annoying. He's got some defensive shenanigans available to him, so we'll cover that after. But aside from that, we'll hook straight into it. So my initial impression, just FYI, if you're only like at this point, is this guy is massively above curve, but he's a bit of a high risk, high reward. So it'll be a bit of uh, management with his token. But aside from that, it should be pretty decent. And he's definitely one you want to look at. Spirit Venom, both of his attacks are mystic. Range three, five dice, zero cost. So this is his builder. Game power equal to damage dealt and wild sap power. Outstanding. This is a mini Modoc without the rerolls. We already know this is going to generate heaps of power. You know, I've, this, I'm really happy to see this get put on a four threat character. It feels like Venom's attack. We already know it's got a massive range. Range three is excellent for a builder, and they didn't cap it at four dice like they have with some of the range three stuff for a four threat. So he's already above curve. His builder is just your standard range two strike. Doesn't compete with this at all. Staff of Legba, range two. So you have to get in close. Seven dice, that's respectable. Three power, that is really cheap for seven dice attack. So I'm happy to see that because I know what some of the, some of the ones coming out they cost it at four power and sometimes five power for your four and three threats. So happy to see it at three. And it has a new ability on it: wild power burn. Before damage is dealt, the target character loses one da one power for each wild in the attack roll. The target character suffers one damage for each power lost in this way and does not gain power equal to the damage from the power burn. So this is awesome. So if you see a low health character, you can snipe them with this without worrying about powering them up. It does have a little caveat. They have to have power. So if they're tapped out and they got zero, that power burn does nothing. So I'm happy with that. That's really strong. And I, what that actually does is it, it does give him this insane spike capability but my gut feeling is it makes the minimum damage of this Staff of Leg Bar higher than average. So your normal seven dice Mystic Attack will do X damage on for your average, you know, three, three, three for defense. This is gonna do one above that because of this power burn. And to top it off, um, it ignores defense rolls, right? So you put this into somebody who has 50 million Mystic Defense uh, and you roll seven power burn, they got seven power, they take seven damage, right? It doesn't matter how many dice they roll, they take it. So really powerful, bypasses defensive rolls, happy to see that, it's good. I'm gonna skip to the bottom and work my way up on this one, guys, because it kind of works that way because a lot of it's built around his brother Daniel token. Just FYI, there is completely nothing different on his injured side, so six health, six health, no bold in any of the superpowers, so well, we don't need to cover both sides. Flight, awesome. Means nothing, none of the terrain's gonna slow him down. Immunity to Hex and Incinerate, that is amazing. Hex is getting more and more popular. Incinerate is handed out in Demons, so now it gives some Demons play for people that wanna bring him in. He can happily sit on the back Demon and be within range three of the middle one and be a pest and relevant, so that's great. There's a lot of characters handing out incinerate now, and a lot of character, a lot of, lot of, there's a few affiliations that require that incinerate to kind of get the ball moving for them. So, really strong. We'll move to the infinite, inf infinite or the innate superpower for Doctor Voodoo, which is the spirit of Brother Daniel. This character, by the way, actually, I don't know anything about this guy. I'd be interested to know what the deal is with this. Maybe it's his, like, is it his brother or is it just a, you know, like we talking a holy man or something? So I kind of can tell me in the comments below what you think about this one. 
So this character begins the game with a Brother Daniel token. While this character has the token, add two dice to all of its defense and dodge rolls. Let's just pause there. His stat line is now 446. That blows every other stat line at four threat out of the water. As dodge rolls as well. So there's no weakness there. During the power phase, you may move the token from anywhere to this character. I love that that's free because I feel like you might get it trapped on a character and you won't get the power to get it back. And you can also do it without priority and batten down the hatches. So I love that. Whenever a character is dazed or KO'd while it has the token, move it to this character. This character cannot have any Brother Daniel token that's not its. Like so, he can't take the other team's Brother Daniel token. When this character is moved in the battlefield, take the token with him. Awesome. If that finished there, I'd be happy. Spoiler alert, it doesn't. Whenever this character rolls dice, after the effect is resolved, it gains one power if at least one skull. If it rolled at least one skull. That's Shuri. We've all been playing at Shuri for a long time. We already know how much this can generate. He is going to be generating a lot of power, which makes him, which will enable him for the rest of his stuff, which now means that if he does his spender, he's going to be sapping power. He's going to be equal in power damage to dealt, equal to damage dealt. And if he rolls a skull, doesn't matter, still gets power. So his staff of leg bar, big attack, he can do it at will from the look of it. That's good to see. Recall Spirit. Whenever this character is targeted by an attack and may use his superpower, move the Brother Daniel token to this character from anywhere. This is basically pay two power, add two dice to your defense rolls. That's great, except for you don't have to keep repaying it. So it's massively above curve. All your Doctor Strangers and all that wish they had this ability, okay? But they just can't give it to anyone else. Awesome. Add two defense dice to dodge roll as well. So that's, that's excellent. Spiritual Strength. Spiritual strength, three power. So the first part of this ability is overcosted. Choose an interactive terrain feature or enemy character, both of size two or less within two and throw it S. At three power, that's overcosted, but this is where the three power comes in. If this character has the brother Daniel token, you may choose a terrain feature of size three or less within two and throw it small, only use once per turn. That's why it's three. He has the ability to throw a size three which is awesome. We'd love to see that because size three starts to put you near that one shot range for some characters. Like that Okoye can be one shot. That's what you want to be seeing, right? Like that's good to go. Pay three power, one shot Okoye. If you're really lucky, love it. And he can throw uh, enemy, uh, enemy characters size two or less. So he has the ability, if he leaves someone on one, pay three power, immediately kill them and potentially spike some extra into someone else. Love it. That's excellent. Four threat is the probably the most competitive threat slot in the game. And this is the kind of stuff you need to see to, to look at bringing in a four threat over some of these other monsters like Medusa and Black Panther that we have floating around. This is where we get to the spicy stuff. Possession, active superpower, X costed. So if you're playing Avengers, you cannot reduce this. You can reduce the other two, but you can't touch this one. So he may not be your average, you know, generic, hey, this guy will be good in Avengers guy. Uh, this character may spend any on power to use the superpower. Choose an enemy character within three of this character with a threat value equal to or lower than the amount of power spent to use this superpower. I don't know why you would ever overspend to do this. It's interesting. So maybe there's something coming out. don't know. The enemy character drops all objective tokens it is holding. Awesome, if it stopped there, I'm happy. Move the Brother Daniel token to this character. While the character has the Brother Daniel token, it cannot interact, interact with, hold, or contest objective tokens. So you turn them into Nebula. Except for Nebula has a bunch of upsides, like she can reroll any number of dice against anything that's holding or interacting with an objective token. You don't get that on your normal characters. This is also, Excellent anti-extract runner tech. So anti-Miles, anti-Angela, anti-Amazing Spider-Man. You just put this on them for five power. That's it. Their main their main gimmick has now been severely limited. But it also has some other repercussions when you look at characters like Enchantress. Um, they can no longer pay to steal objectives. Like, because I think 
Enchantress straight up says you transfer it to her, not you drop. Like Miles can still make you drop the objectives with his Venom Blast, but Enchantress, I'd like to to see the interaction. If someone in the comments could maybe, who's a lot smarter than me at reading the rule book, uh, tell me the interaction here. Does it does this possession just blank her Siren's Kiss or what the Siren's Call or whatever the hell that superpower is? Um, that's really crazy, and it's also got some other implications because I actually believe this guy would have been designed probably right after Sword was tested. So Sword's been out now, which is a 14 threat secure. It's obscenely powerful. Uh, if you're not building for it in your competitive rosters, guys, you'd need to be because if you get hit with a Sword um, secure and the other team is built for it and you're not, it is extremely feels bad because it's very close to an auto loss. He has massive, he has heaps of anti-sword tech. And now let me just paint the picture for you. You're playing four wide on sword, whatever. I'll throw out four characters, right? Pick any 10 point affiliation. Let's just say the new blade. Um, if Iron Fist is countered or whatever, we'll say Taskmaster. So it's blade, Moon Knight, Taskmaster, Dr. Voodoo. We've come in at 14 threat. We're versing a five wide squad. You just need to make sure that you leave Dr. Voodoo to your last activation. So use Blade, use Moon Knight, use Taskmaster, do all the things you have to do. You should be getting to your fourth activation. Or even if, let's say you're going second, let's say you're going second, they activate, you activate. As long as you have the second last activation, being your last character, then their last character, you win the sword base as long as you already own it because you can possess their last character, put this token on them, and they can no longer do the last interaction to try and steal the sword base off you because they can't interact with, hold, or contest objective tokens. They also can't steal any extracts that happen to be sitting on the ground after your turn's done because you'd be like, oh, I've dazed that character. He was holding whatever, three cubes or three hammers. I've only got enough power to pick up two um, or something you know, whatever the situation is, you just put a possession on them and they can no longer get it. So this is really good. He is a very good number 10 for any roster if you're concerned about sword base. Um, you know, he's great in gamma, move up, pick the person on the middle, middle gamma, shoot them or get some power, possess one, throw the other, you know, for whatever reason, unless there's a Valkyrie. So as long as you have six power, which he could from his spirit venom because he and his... Um, skull skulls equal power um he could very quickly get to six power on the first turn from one attack and if he does that you can possess a three threat and throw the other one and therefore you own the central objective like you've just controlled two characters and you don't even have to move one of them so under that pretense if i was doing my tier list this guy would slot immediately into meta straight up like, just on my tier list video, guys, thanks for all the support. Something unbelievable. Bang this bad boy in meta right now because the simple fact that he can deal with Sword and he's outstanding on Demons, which are two of the most popular secures in the game, is just phenomenal, okay? So think, have a think about that. Think about some shenanigans you can do there. He's an awesome attrition piece because he's going to hit hard from his Staff of Legba. He's got a great throw. He's got a size three throw, size two character. So he's going to be an excellent attrition piece. He can go in. 446 means he's probably going to be hanging around. And there's a high risk, high reward. Put the Brother Daniel token on somewhere else. And then you're 224. Still fine. You know, protect him with an Okoye. Okoye is in every roster anyway. Put the bodyguard next to him. He's fine. Now, rosters that he's going to slot into. My initial thought off the cuff was that he will immediately slot into any criminal syndicate list because that makes their that possession makes their leadership of um, their healthy characters counting as two just so disgusting. Because once they start dazing characters and your healthy numbers start to plummet, that possession is essentially pay power make them not healthy, right? Like they can't interact. And then the criminal syndicate can just overwhelm you with their secure control. So he's really powerful there. That's my initial impression. 
I don't think he's going to be that great in Avengers, so probably steer clear of that. I mean, he'll be fine. It's still a reduction on his throw and a reduction on his recall spirit whenever he needs it, so that's great. Uh, Cabal, well, he'll be excellent. He brings in a cheap, mis a four threat mystic, so low threat Cabal is going to be happy to see him. Um, especially with Red Skull moving him around, and the attacks are obviously going to ge generate extra power whenever he hits with an attack, so you'd love to see that. Uh, Wakanda, he'll be just absolutely disgusting in. You know, in a 17 point Wakanda, when you're looking at Panther, Shuri, Okoye, Dr. Voodoo, and Valkyrie. That is an absolutely disgusting 17 threat squad if you're not prepared for it. It's got Mystic. It's got repositions on every one of his characters except for Okoye. They can pick your extract runner and go, nope. Here's a, here's a um, Doc, uh, Brother Daniel token. You can no longer be the extract carrier. Um, so it really limits your counterplay available there. So this guy is he's a uh, he's definitely a, a meta i'd love to see how he ends up when he hits the table and like what some of these really top tier players come up with he could very quickly slot into that s tier god tier best tier so yeah he's just all round excellent um there's not many affiliations that are going to be upset even guardians like to see this guy because he can take he can control two characters a turn, which will really assist the guardians in trying to, you know, overwhelm with numbers. You know, Sam Spam probably doesn't want to look at this guy, but you know, still it's great. Like you're not going to be upset having possession on your team, which is his top superpower. All in all, really impressed with Doctor Voodoo. This new set coming out, um, which is like the like people just call it the Mystic set, seems to have some really, really, really powerful stuff coming. Every time I think that they're running out of design space, they create things like power burn and possession and spiritual strength and Brother Daniel tokens and this stuff that you just like, who is the madman behind all of this? And I just love to see it from Atomic Mass Games. So, you know, big thumbs up to them. Let, keep doing this stuff. We love to see it. It adds the spice to the game, keeps things moving, keeps people's, you know, thinking about different rosters and just makes that 10-man roster so hard to, to, to flesh out with the ideal choice. Um, but yeah, all in all, guys, this guy's absolutely meta. I'll just wrap it up. Really great attacks, really great superpowers, um, really great anti bullcrap extract play tech in that you can just go, nope, you don't get it. Um, really, really, really powerful, really, really, really impressed. So good to see it happening. And yeah, peace out. That's it for me. Take it easy.